Then there is a book of short stories that basically falls in between book eight and nine called Besieged. Mm -hmm. And I got some news about that in a minute. Really? What's up and welcome to Beside the Point here on Nerdy Blurb TV. We've got a special episode for you guys. We have Kevin Hearn here to talk about not only him as a writer, but the wonderful series that is the Iron Druid Chronicles, one of my all-time favorite series. And we want to know what the future may be for his writing career, maybe just talk about the characters in general in the Iron Druid Chronicles, and just shoot the breeze. So stay with us. Presented by None of This Really Matters, this is Beside the Point here on Nerdy Blurb TV. I'm Ryan, and I'm joined here with Kevin Hearn, the author of the Iron Druid Chronicles. Kevin, how are you today? Well, I'm doing great. Thanks, Ryan, for having me. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. I couldn't believe that, that you had gotten back to me so quick when I emailed you. First off, I was I'm, I'm a huge fan of all of your books and all of your short stories. So thank you again for just taking the time to be here on our channel and, and our, on our po podcast. Really excited to have you. Oh, th thank you again for, for reaching out. I really appreciate it. It's my pleasure. Awesome. Well, I just, I just really wanted to first off, like get to know you if that doesn't sound too corny or anything, but really just like, how how did you get into writing? How did you become uh, an author? Oh, that's uh, quite a long story in a, in a sense that in the sense that it just took a long time to get uh, published for me. I wanted to start writing at 19 when I was in college, um, and then it took a long time. I didn't get published until I was 39. So I was writing that, that entire time. Uh, I had a day job. I was a high school English teacher, and I, while I was doing all of that, I would write for a little while, um, you know, at night. And then, of course, whenever I had breaks from school, I would write more. Um, and I, I failed a lot and uh, basically didn't finish a, a bunch of books. And then I finally finished one, which was a terrible, terrible book full of cliches uh, that uh, I'm so glad that I finally finished because that was the important part is just finishing a book. Because then you learn that, hey, I can actually do this. And, hey, I could do it better next time. So then I wrote another book after the, the first one. It was also terrible, but I learned even more. Uh, and then the third book I wrote was Founded, uh, which required a little bit more editing than my other books have because it was my first one that sold and I needed to know a lot more. And my editor was amazing. And then uh, once that got done, my edits after that were a lot faster and simpler because I kind of knew the game and I got faster at writing as well. So Hounded took me 11 months, but no, none of the other Iron Druid books took as long because, uh, I mean, some of them were, took less than five months. So that, uh, you know, you get better at it as you go. So uh, for anybody who does want to become a writer uh, and, and thinks that, wow, after two years, I haven't made it. Just remember that it took me 20 years to get published and then uh, everything worked out after that because I kind of stuck with it and, um, and and learned a lot from my mistakes. That's awesome. And that's really inspiring, too, because like the key key phrase is there is that you failed and and i think you you decided to like accept the fact that you're going to fail and and possibly fail even more that's really that's really cool if those of you who aren't familiar with uh kevin hearn's uh books at all especially the iron druid chronicles of which we had talked about um could you tell us just a little bit about the iron druid chronicles uh as an introduction to to anyone who had never heard of it Oh, sure. Uh, the Iron Druid Chronicles follows uh, the adventures of a fellow who calls himself Atticus O'Sullivan. And the first book is set in 2010. And uh, then it goes forward from there. Uh, anyway, he's a Druid who was born uh, before the Common Era. And he's so, so he's over 2,000 years old. Uh, and he's been in hiding for much of that time from Irish gods who want to kill him. 
because he stole a sword called Fra that uh, is part of Irish mythology. And uh, the, the Irish gods that he stole it from kind of want it back. So he's been hiding all of this time, and then he finally gets tired of running, and, you know, in 2010 says, all right, let's do this. And and his his choice, his decision to fight instead of run has incredible consequences and that keeps snowballing on him as the series goes on. So uh, that that is basically the, the gist of it. Uh, there is a talking dog in there. Uh, there's a lot of mythology that goes on uh, or, or included in it. Um, and uh, it, uh, I just really love the idea of having a druid as the rather than – I, I mean, there's so many other different sorts of urban fantasy kind of characters that were uh, and are kind of dominant. Uh, you know, you've got your vampires and werewolves and things like that. And uh, but nobody was really writing druids. And so I, I thought that that was an opportunity to do something a bit different. And I went after it and it was fun. And see, that's what's cool. If if any if anyone was listening to that very closely it, it should have grabbed you from Talking Dog because the dog's name is Oberon and, and everyone that I have talked to and, and talked about this book with has been and is one of my favorite characters. He's probably one of my favorite literary characters to date because it's so – what you do that I really appreciate is bring, bring in so much history because he's such an old druid. Uh, so much history, but then a lot of fun with it. And there's Oberon, who has this this quirky, uh, fun uh, personality to him as a as a dog, but is able to to communicate with with his master Atticus. I I love the fact that see I was looking the the way that I got hounded referred to me is because I I love a really awful movie called The Highlander, where he is is so old he's ancient and and he lives to in nowadays and i thought this if this movie this movie's great because of the premise but it's such an awful movie and uh just talking to some of my friends uh one of my friends kelsey had actually said like you should read this book called the iron druid chronicles uh where it's a century year old druid who lives in today where everything everything that and now correct me if I'm wrong, everything that a mortal has faith in it exists. So that means such as religion, religions, pantheons, um, mystical creatures like werewolves and vampires like you had said. But you chose to take it in a different direction, which I think is so unique and really, really cool. Tell me where you – like have you always been interested in mythology or were you just inspired by other books? Yeah, I, I, I actually uh, studied religions for a while, and that was a lot of fun. I've attended a lot of different services and spoken to folks of different faiths and uh, have great respect for them all. And um, I, I love uh, the, all of the things that they have in common, you see. And uh, when I was writing and decided to make Celtic, uh, the Celtic pantheon, or specifically really the Irish pantheon, not necessarily the Celtic one because they are different um, – so when I was deciding to make the Irish Pantheon uh, the focus, uh, I had to ask myself a question. If, if the Irish Pantheon is real, what about all of the other pantheons? And then when I answered, they're all real, it became so much fun. And uh, I just went with, with that particular focus. It wasn't just the Irish Pantheon is real, it's that they're all real because we all believe in these things. And this is not – you know, a, a completely original idea that that idea has been out there that uh, humans, you know, right. create and that. Uh, so um, that uh, what, once you actually go around and play with that idea, it becomes a lot of fun. And Oberon, his um, purpose was to basically root Atticus in the present uh, because he has such a long lifetime. Uh, he's got 2,000 years of history, and you can quickly get lost in that uh, if you wish to dwell in, in memories. But Oberon is always in the present because he's a dog, and they don't remember things from very long ago and uh, can't really think too much about the future except in terms of food. So uh, <laughs> that that was the purpose of Oberon, and he, and he was basically a perfect companion 
for Atticus for that reason. And I even have a little pocket Oberon here uh, for those of you who are actually watching on video. Um, this was given to me by a reader, and it's so incredibly cute. And I like to have uh, little uh, photo adventures with it sometime. Put pocket Oberon somewhere and uh, have a good time with it. That's so. awesome. That's cool. I like. I like. I mean, it totally makes sense. Sometimes I'm I'm really like shallow when it comes to what authors are intending, but it. it that's what exactly what Oberon did, and I think you did a great job in keeping Atticus grounded in in now because, like in in all of all of the books altogether, like there's a lot of other people, other creatures or or gods even who are, are way too hung up on the past, and 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 I think it's really cool. There's even times where uh, you had written Atticus uh, as as really really positive as as. As such a optimistic person, and and even, I think it was. I, correct me if I'm wrong. I think it was a witch who had said that. Why are you so? Why are you so positive after you've seen so many things? And and I and I think that's just because of how grounded he is in the present, which was really really cool. Yeah, he has to uh, maintain a philosophy of of enjoying what's in front of him now instead of dwelling on maybe horrors or things that he has said, seen in the past. Um, and, and obviously dwell on the future, you know, but uh, rather appreciate this particular moment um, because all of them are precious. Absolutely. That's so cool. So um, you had written um, some things that I want, I don't want to be so bold as to say that maybe you, you, uh, gained inspiration from them or anything but when you had mentioned neil gaiman uh in i think it was i think it was in the book hammered um yes. correct correct me okay um uh how how he was such an inspiration i was just wondering has any any other author kind of like helped you to to come along this way to build I don't know if I want to call it a universe, but I mean, it makes sense to me that it's it's a universe that exists where every pantheon is real. What what would you say has inspired you on your journey? What would it be other authors like Neil Gaiman, or would it be uh, just your imagination, or what exactly would you say would be a pin? Could you pinpoint it? Oh, I don't know if uh, if it was Neil Gaiman certainly. Fantastic, uh, an amazing author and, and a huge, uh, you know, well, an influence in, in terms of, uh, gosh, I wish I could write like him. Um, and uh, But in terms of uh, the, the Pantheon stuff, most of that came from my uh, religious studies uh, back in college. So uh, th that inspired me uh, to, to uh, write about them uh, or include them, I should say, uh, in, in my event. Uh, I obviously didn't get to of them that are that are out there because my goodness there are so many um but um i got to whatever uh, atticus could run into uh during the course of his journey there and it was a lot of fun that's so cool that's awesome so that leads me into another question i have uh when while reading all of your books there's so much uh, mythology there's so much history even to where it's like I have to put the book down and just be like, how the heck did he research all of this stuff? Like, like I, I, I understand that it took you 20 years to get to, to wherever it was to publish these books. But like, wh what exactly is like your, your research? Like, is this all just information you have? Like, I, I'm sure you have some people that you work with. How exactly uh, are you pulling this kind of superpower off? Well, uh, so some of it I did have, but not all of it. Um, so I did have to do some research, but some of it was in my head because of teaching high school English. So what what that unfortunately is basically kind of confined to the Greco-Roman and Norse traditions when it comes to mythology. It doesn't really cover much else. So I had quite a bit of the Greco-Roman and Norse stuff in my head already. Um, but then if I wanted to go outside of that, that's where uh, additional research or my uh, college courses in different faiths of the world came in. And uh, for the Irish stuff specifically, I was at the time able to find 
everything I needed from Trinity College in Dublin, Ireland. They had online all of the different mythological cycles um, from Irish uh, pagan tradition. Wow, see, and that's really cool because that's that's why I I think that's why I fell in love like with just the Iron Druid series because of how much I have an appreciation to mythology and to religion and and how I've always seen those two things as as one and I I love being able to 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 read that with such a fun spin on it uh, whether you want to call it pop culture references or not it, it's it's a really fun book with things that first off I'm not familiar with but then I learn about and then second things that I'm very much familiar with like all of your Star Trek references and and baseball references and and then so on and so forth. it's just it's a it's a fun book again a huge fan and I I it's always been just a question. It's just like how did he do that? And it's really cool that it was it was just something that because I would imagine it's it's a passion of yours to to learn these things. That's awesome. Yes, absolutely. The the Irish stuff, for example, is is fascinating. You know, action packed stuff you would expect of modern pros, perhaps, but. There's a lot of great stuff in there, and I was, you know, super curious about why only a few things had managed to get into stories to that point. Uh, you know, you you perhaps the Morrigan quite a bit, or you heard about Briad, or uh, more Celtic rather than Irish, Cernunos, the horned god, or the you know the wild hunt and that kind of thing. So um, those would appear in stories, but not the rest of the Irish pantheon. And I thought they were fascinating. And I found um, some parallels with Greco-Roman myth, like Flittish, the Huntress, is very similar to uh, Artemis and Diana uh, of the, uh, the Greco-Roman tradition. And uh, then I also found that there were holes in the mythology that I could fill in with my druid. That was the real fun, because Fragara was this actual sword given by the Tua de Danon to Khan of the Hundred Battles, the historical Irish king who united all of Ireland. And then... Um, there's no record of him ever giving it back. So that was where I was able to say, oh, well, my druid stole it. And, and uh, kind of build in, uh, to the, I, you know, fill in the cracks of the mythology a little bit um, with with my story. And that was uh, quite a bit of fun. I'll bet. That's really cool. Uh, that That's – so those who don't know, there are – and correct me if I'm wrong. There are nine full novels of the Iron Druid – chronicles series and then there's a few a, a few i don't know how many a few some of them are novels right uh short stories and and novels if if i'm correct yeah do, do you do you want to know those or do i want to know because uh, like i know that there's some short stories with oberon and uh and a squirrel on an, on a train and there's there's also uh, a book that comes before hounded as well but like all in all how many how many readings do you think uh are there all together so there are the nine novels then there is a book of short stories that basically falls in between book eight and nine called besieged mm -hmm. and i got some news about that in a minute really um okay. and then uh, yeah, yeah, and then uh, there are three novellas narrated by Oberon, the Irish Wolfhound. So they're they're like they're called Oberon's Meaty Mysteries. So they're like <laughs> yeah. these little light heart mysteries, and much more, um, much more rated for kids, I suppose, than you know the Iron Druid, you know, novels are. Um, so two of them are already out: the Purloined Poodle and the Squirrel on the Train that you mentioned. And then the third one is going to be called the Buzzkill. And that's going to be out in February. Uh, and it's part of a, a little anthology with Chuck Wendig and Delilah S. Dawson called Death and Honey. So there's a theme of bees going through this thing. And it's going to be a lot of fun. <laughs> that's um, awesome. And in, it's, yeah, in addition to that, I've got uh, uh, some some other novellas out there in the Iron Druids world and some other uh, short stories. So, yeah, I've done quite a bit of stuff outside of the uh, the novels themselves. Cool. Well, uh, as as much as I, I love the the Iron Druid Chronicles 
uh, series. Let's put a pin in that for just a minute, and let's talk about uh, mm -hmm. some some things that you may possibly be working on right now. I know that you are writing a, a few things right now, as well as you recently just came out with uh, a book, uh, like I think very recently, actually. So could you tell us just a little bit, it, and, and don't give us too much if you don't have to, uh, of what you may be working on right now, as well as uh, what you would like to, to maybe shamelessly plug okay sure um one is uh, a, an epic fantasy trilogy uh called the seven kennings and the first book of that is called a plague of giants and that's out now in paperback and uh you can still get signed hard copies of that through world builders if you like where all the money goes to charity um and uh the, i'm working on the second book of that right now that's called a queens and that's what i'm working on until the end of the year um, but then I also have a very fun, lighthearted uh, series that makes makes a little bit of fun of epic fantasies. Mm -hmm. uh, and I wrote that with Delilah S. Dawson. Mm -hmm. And the first one is called Kill the Farm Boy. And that is out now. And uh, it, it's a lovely sort of D&D &D type quest, but with uh, little tweaks on all of the characters. And uh, that one is uh, going to be followed up by No Country for Old Gnomes. And that will be out in April of next year. Uh, and so, and then after that is the third book called The Princess Beard. So <laughs> we have written three of those now, and uh, but we're just waiting for them to come out, the second two. So uh, two very different kinds of books that you can go check out besides The Iron Druid. And then um, the thing that I was going to announce to you or, or uh, let you know about is that uh, I will have a spinoff of The Iron Druid Chronicles coming out. Oh. And I get to work on it uh, starting next year after I get finished with the book I'm working on now. Once I get done with Blight of Black Wings, I'm working on this new series. And it is based off a character that has two lines in Besieged. So, wow. uh, But this character that I brought into a short story in Besieged, so mysterious and cool, I just kept coming back to this this person and I wanted to know more about him and what was he like and what was he doing and so on. And the more I thought about him, the fun him and uh, I, I came up with a whole new series. So it is set in the iron Druid universe, but it, you know, the Druids are kind of mentioned and yes, they exist, but they won't be part of the action. This is going to be a completely different uh, thing going on. And uh, I will t say much more about it. Uh, when I get to actually start writing it and do my research trip, I have to do a research trip uh, f to make this work. Wow. So um, I, th uh, one of the things I love to do with my – I don't know if you realize or not, but all of my locations are, are accurate. Yes. And uh, I, I do location scouting. So I have to go do that for this next series before um, I get started on it. Um, and so I'll be traveling a little bit in February and probably sharing quite a bit on social media uh, about my travels and the research that I'm doing for the new series. It'll be a lot of fun. That's way cool. And that's actually another thing that I wanted to ask that I forgot to ask earlier is if travel has been a huge factor. It's really cool that, that you, from what I gather, you take the time to travel to either gather inspiration or, or even for research purposes. Is it going to be, can I ask if it's going to be sure. stateside? Because I know Rulabula exists. I've actually been in Tempe. I haven't yeah. been to the bar, but I have I, I have been in the vicinity um, because I, I live pretty close to Arizona. So I know that that exists. So I, I, I it's, it's really cool to, to see that all of these other places do exist. So for your, your spinoff, will it all be based pretty much – U.S. or will you be going on trips that will take you outside of the U.S.? This one is primarily based in Scotland. However, there will be parts of it that are based in North America, both in the United States and Canada. So, yeah, it'll be kind of northern hemispherish mostly for the base, but it can also uh, kind of wander quite a bit you, uh, for reasons that will become clear. So, um, yeah, it, it, it's, uh, it is based, uh, the, the, the character is Scottish. Um, so you can look forward to that fun of, of, of the Scottish uh, way of expressing themselves is, is always entertaining and delightful. Awesome. And so, uh, 
That's going to be uh, just a, a great time for me. I've never been to Scotland, and I'm looking forward to the trip uh, immensely. Really cool. Awesome. I am really excited for that. And uh, we actually we actually had somebody uh, send us. I, I, told, I told a few people that we were going to be interviewing you today. And uh, I had my brother actually be really excited because he's reading the Iron Druid Chronicles as well. I got him hooked on it about, like, I think a month ago. And he's loving it. And he sent in a video. Uh, of a question that he wanted to ask. Hey there, this is Jake from Nerdy Blurb TV. I was wondering, I love your books by the way, what is going to happen with the Iron Druid? Are there going to be some movies or TV shows? How many more books do you anticipate on writing? Let me know, because I'm dying to figure out. Okay. Um, uh... At the end of the last book, there is a fairly decent um, indication of what his future will be. However, in the uh, the last Oberon's Meaty Mystery, which is coming out, uh, as I said, uh, in February as a part of that anthology called Death and Honey, that really does give you a, a really good look at what Atticus will be doing going forward, Atticus and Oberon and, and Starbuck. So uh, those three um, have their future pretty well laid out for them by the end of that novella. So um, that that's one thing. And then, of course, there's going to be the um, the spinoff series as well. That will definitely be in, um, you know, coming along. And I'll be able to announce more about that a little bit later. I can tell you this, but I can't tell you any, any names or anything like that yet. So totally yeah. get that. There you go. Awesome. Yeah. That's really cool. So – um, speaking of graphic novels, um, I, I understand that you are a pretty big fan of comic books and that you have, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, you have wrote a few as well. I haven't. You haven't. <laughs> I haven't written it. I knew no, it. No, I haven't written any, uh, but, but, uh, I, I, uh, maybe I will someday. I have no idea, but I, I do have, uh, there's an adaptation of the Iron Druid uh, books, uh, well, the first one, Hounded. Um, there's two issues out right now, and I believe the third one is coming out at the end of September. And uh, it's just called Hounded, issue one. And uh, again, if you would like copies of those, if you can't find them in your comic book store, um, you can go to the World Builders Market site, and uh, they have signed copies. And again, everything goes to charity. So. Um, there you really go. Cool. If, you, if folks want to see the comic adaptation, it's there. Yeah, I've seen yeah. some of the artwork. It looks really, really cool. I'm, I'm excited for that because I'm, I'm really big into graphic novels, comic books, and so on and so forth. And when I had heard that, um, getting, getting ready to, to, to have this interview, I had saw that, and so that was just more fuel to the flame of me wanting to talk to you because of of how how cool it would be to be able to see all of this as well so that that would be really interesting so i i just have a couple other questions for you before i let you go and these are just really just uh about you in general i love how how much humor you put in into the book and you seem like such uh like a fun guy and everything is are you writing so much of of your own personality in these books because that is really how it feels and i'm just curious like where do you come up with this material that you have oh gosh uh it, it's always such a hard question to answer i don't know how much of it is me and uh, and how much of it, uh, it, I guess in one sense, since I'm writing it, it's all me, but in the other, you know, I, I'm also, these are fictional characters that I'm making up that are not me. So, um, you know, it, it, it's some sort of weird hybrid of the two, I suppose. Um, but, uh, in, in terms of, uh, <laughs> of the humor, uh, I suppose it's all an accident. I, I'm not sure where it comes from. Uh, I was trying to write a very serious thing and it just didn't work out. Um, because I do like to see the humor in things, uh, as I go through life and, uh, because it's kind of sad to be angry all the time, I suppose. So, uh, it, 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 some, yeah, some, some people seem to live that way. And I'm like, I don't, I don't know if they're really in, uh, enjoying their lives that way. So, um, I like to, uh, look at things a little bit more positively. And, uh, I suppose that does leak through my writing. That's cool. And, and I appreciate that for sure. One other question that I have, and I'm a huge fan of of just audiobooks in general uh i had seen uh oh, yeah. a 
interview or, or just kind of like a conversation between you and Luke Daniels, who does the audiobooks for all of the pretty much all of your your writings uh, that that you have all of your books that are through Audible. How is that relationship? And and did you ever like because uh, I mean, 20 years ago, I mean, audiobooks weren't as big as they they are now. I mean, did you ever see that coming? I, I didn't. Um, in fact, when uh, they first came to me for an audiobook contract for Hounded, I, I thought, okay, well, you're going to give me this money and I'll never earn it back because, you know, it, it audio, who, who buys audio? I didn't think it was going to be a big deal at all because my experience as an English teacher with audiobooks is that audiobooks are things you, you press play on to make your students hate reading. <laughs> I mean, because they were just, they used to be terrible, right? They, they used to be awful, but the thing is, what's happened is a, a combination of things. Um, people have longer commutes to work. The technology has come along to the point where you can digitize this stuff much better. And also, they were figuring out because they could sell it that you could therefore pay to have a much higher quality of narrator than they used to be able to get. So you have professional actors now um, <clears throat> narrating books. And that's what happened. Luke Daniels is a stage actor, and he he did audio, uh, and now now he is so better in audio. He does stage on the side. It used to be the other way around. He used to be mainly stage and did audio on the side. Wow. Now he is booked for months in advance, and he can only occasionally do a stage play anymore because he's so so in demand for his audio work. So uh, it is is definitely become um, a huge thing. And I don't know if you remember, maybe when you were younger, you used to hear about road rage incidents a lot. But you don't hear about them anymore because I think people are listening in their cars to either audiobooks or podcasts. And because they have something that's keeping their mind occupied, they don't have time to be mad at whoever's in front of them <laughs> in traffic, you know? And they just don't get... You, you, you just don't have as many issues anymore as you used to. And uh, that, that's a theory anyway. Of course, I have no research to back that up. That's just a pet thing. But I really <laughs> do appreciate the books and how they've uh, become so popular. I, I, I totally get it. Because I, I got I to gotta be this guy and just admit that I probably wouldn't have ever – considered reading like bang i mean when you're younger you're always like oh read like why can't i just watch the movie of monte cristo count of monte cristo instead you know what i mean but like like reading listening to audiobooks uh, and super cliche i know but re listening to harry potter when i was younger that was like wow there's like this whole uh, like books are cool and now it's like it's become this ad addictive thing for me to 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 wait for audible to give me the free credit and then not wait for the credit and then buy all the iron drew chronicles series in one sitting which i really <laughs> freaking did and and i don't regret it because they're great and luke daniels does a great job and you do a great job of writing it but like audio has has definitely taken the world by storm and i mean look what we're doing right now we're 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 set up for a podcast and and who knows maybe no one will listen to it because i am do such a poor job at marking it but hopefully people will listen to what you have to say but i'm i only work about 10 minutes away and it, every single time it's it's luke daniels or a podcast in my car and so i think it's really cool to see the dynamic especially for like authors as yourself to see how the game has changed and i want to ask do you think it's in your favor do you think that that this is the future or do you think that it'll evolve a little bit more uh okay so yes uh, audio is now a huge portion of of uh, anybody's contract at least in the, i should say i should qualify that by saying in the science fiction and fantasy genre because of course i don't really know what's going on in other genres but in science fiction and fantasy audio has become more and more uh, a huge portion of uh, of sales, uh, and uh, at least it has for me because Luke Daniels has been doing such a great job. So uh, it, it's now a significant portion of you know what I do. Is we, even when I write, I think, well, how is this going to work for audio? If I'm going to do a purely visual pun on spelling, for example, that will not come across in the audio, and I really should try something else. 
So uh, that that is that is basically a, a consideration now: is how will this play in audio, not just in print? Um, and, and so it has changed the game a little bit, uh, or, or even a lot. You know, not just in terms of how you write, but in terms of author income streams, because that was an income stream that did not exist previously. Do you feel do you, and I mean, ah, man, I don't I don't want to put you in a tough situation, but does that hinder? a lot of things or does that help more it doesn't really hinder a lot except when you're trying to be very punny like i, I came across it more with uh the, the 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 funny stuff that i was doing with delilah S. dawson when we were doing kill the farm boy no country for old gnomes and princess beard those have a lot of puns in them and we had to look at all of the puns and think well does this work only visually because if it only works visually then we have to maybe re rethink that because all of this is going to be an audio too and it just won't work if it's if it's a purely visual pun people are not going to pick that up when they're listening to it so that that was the only place where it really became a, a hindrance i guess uh otherwise no it's it's been fabulous because uh luke does such a fantastic job with his narration so he does, and and don't I mean give yourself some credit. You do a great job at writing it. I mean, if if it wasn't for you, I mean Luke would just be in a corner uh, talking to himself. So so thank you so much. I just want to say thank you so much for for giving us your time coming on here. Such a fun, just I mean I love talking about books in general. So and and other than my wife and probably my brother i don't have a, a huge outlet so it's a huge blessing to actually have the writer here talking to us really appreciate it looking so looking forward to to anything that you have coming up in the future especially besieged or at least the spin-off of the iron drew chronicles thanks for sharing with us that much oh you're so welcome uh can i can i give you a couple of recommendations real quick absolutely please do yeah, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna hold one up uh, for for the folks uh, who have video. But if not, this is Calculating Stars by Mary Robinette Kowal, and uh, this is a fantastic work of science fiction in a slightly uh, alternate history. Um, and it is uh, Mary has done such an amazing job with her research. She's been going to NASA and uh, talking to real astronauts, and they love her books. So if you like. Um, the idea of uh, of the you know the American space program versus uh, the Russian one, a little ways back in the day, but slightly tweaked. Um, you're gonna really dig this. It gets into a lot of historical that's real and she has very detailed notes about what isn't real um i loved it and there's the sequel to it the faded stars is already out so you'd have two books right away to go and then if you're an epic fantasy fan um i got one for that too it's called the city of brass by s.a chakraborty and it's a middle eastern based epic fantasy that just blew me away i couldn't put it down and uh the sequel to that is coming out too very soon so uh, those are a couple of uh, brand new uh, books that you guys can go check out, and uh, I hope you'll enjoy them as much as I did. Awesome. Thank you so much. Really appreciate that because like, I'm sitting here writing down these right now because I, I'm going to blow up my Audible account even more. Uh, hopefully they're, they're there, but uh, those who are listening or watching, go and check out those books if not those go check out kevin hearn's books there's nine novels all together of the iron druid chronicles as well as kill the farm boy which just recently came out and it's so much fun i'm actually listening to that right now that one is really hilarious thank you guys so much for that but uh again any of you who are are new here listening or watching be sure to subscribe and 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 stay with us because we try to do really cool stuff like this and not to mention we just love doing it so until next time we'll see you again We are the music makers, and we are the dreamers of dreams.